December 1989, The Wizard, a feature-length commercial for Nintendo and the Universal Studios theme park, opened in theaters. For me, apart from Guilty Pleasure and Snark, it serves a function shared with UHF and the Bill and Ted movies. A time capsule for the period where the 80s became the 90s. In the climax of the movie, Jimmy's friends enter him into a game tournament where the only games they have to play are Ninja Gaiden and a title yet to be seen on American shores. Super Mario Brothers! Three! Just two weeks after SMB2 was released in America, SMB3 came out in Japan. And this movie was where most people over here saw it for the first time. You know, find the warp, dude. Find the warp! If he finds the warp, he can jump through. <laughs> Kid, you aren't gonna play this game until February 1990 at the earliest. How do you know about the warp whistles? Well, I'm not here to talk about your movie anyway, but the game this movie built up to. Time for story time. SMB3 begins with the Mushroom Kingdom finally free of Bowser's troublemaking, thanks to the Mario Brothers. But when everybody least expected it, the dastardly villain returned, not just to conquer Peach's land, but the entire Mushroom world. His thugs stole the magic wands belonging to the kings of seven countries and turned them into animals. Now it's up to Mario and Luigi to stomp the Koopa King schemes flat once again. I've already discussed the two-player battle mode briefly on the Mario Brothers video, so you can refer to that vid for the basics regarding the arcade game it was based on. Otherwise, regular two-player game is pretty much what you expect from a Mario game. The first thing you'll notice is that the game has a map screen, with black squares marking each level. Sometimes you can skip certain stages if you choose to do so, but not always. The mechanics of the game return to those of SMB1 and beat them up. Fire flowers return for non-Japanese gamers, and new power-ups are brought in as well. The Super Leaf turns you into Raccoon Mario, allowing you to fly if you run long enough and jump. The Frog Suit allows for higher jumping and better mobility in water. The Tanuki Suit works like the Super Leaf, but allows you to turn to a statue in order to avoid hits. The Hammer Brothers suit lets you throw hammers and block projectiles by ducking. The last three power-ups I mentioned are sometimes tucked away in secret areas within the stages. In addition to playing the regular stages, you routinely fight variants of the Hammer Brothers. The Originals, Boomerang Brothers, Sledge Brothers, and Fire Brothers. If you win, you get an item. Speaking of items, you can also find them in the toad houses scattered across the game. You go into them, pick a chest to open, get its item, and go back to the map. If you're about to enter a stage, you can pick out your item and use it from the beginning. New enemies for this game include Chain Chomps, Dry Bones, Thwomps, and Boos. I don't think anyone can forget the desert stage where you have to outrun the sun itself, and I know that nobody can forget the dreaded boss bass of World 3 which can swallow you whole. The classic SMB1 enemies return, along with the bombs. Score 1 for Western SMB2's influence! As you traverse each land, you'll come to a fortress sooner or later, where you fight a Boom Boom at the end. Boom Booms aren't anything to write home about. After being the fortress, it collapses, and a locked path is open. At the end of each country, you board an airship and recover the stolen magic wand from one of the Koopalings. 
At one point, the Koopalings were thought to be Bowser's children, but Shigeru Miyamoto retconned the idea in 2012. Bowser Jr. is Bowser's only child, and the Koopalings are just henchmen. Should you somehow be the Koopaling as Tanuki Mario, Hammer Mario, or Frog Mario, you get a humorous message from the King you see. After saving a king, Princess Peach sends you a letter and gives you a special item with it. Like a music box to put Hammer Brothers to sleep, a Lakitu Cloud to let you skip a level, or even a P-Wing. What's a P-Wing? A Super Leaf on steroids, which becomes a regular one once you beat a stage. With the last king saved, you get one more letter, but this time, it's from Bowser. <laughs> You see, while you were out saving the Mushroom World, he took Peach hostage again. Onward to World 8, Darkland, where Bowser sends out all kinds of tanks, warships, and aircraft to stop you from getting to his castle. Also tossed in the mix is another fortress, the last two regular stages, and three tiles where you can earn super leaves. In the last fight with Bowser, you need to trick him into busting through the bricks in the floor. The best strategy I came up with is that after he comes down on some bricks, stand on or under the platform so he can stop that next. Then move back to the area where he came down last. Once he falls, you save Peach and get a rundown of the eight countries in the game. Whatever items you had in your inventory when you finished become those game-breaking P-Wings. SMB3 has a ton of stuff that just wowed me as a little kid. Keep in mind that I was mostly watching others play the game, so I didn't know about the Oasis on the second floor of World 2-4, or the pipe in the sky of World 5-1 that goes to the center of the stage, or that you can knock out a Karibos Goomba from under a platform and ride around its shoe and stomp on spinies, or even the third section of Desert Land's map screen. At least until I watched my cousins play it. When I got older and began playing on my own, I found out if you use a P-Wing on the first room of World 6-9, you can skip straight to the end and not have to play the main part of the level. It also works on World 7-6, and you can do the same trick on the ground section of World 5-7. Getting a certain amount of coins on a specific level can uh, open a special toad house where you can get an anchor or a P-Wing. If you complete a stage with your coins being a multiple of 11 and the tens digits of your score matches your amount, a Hammer Brother turns into a treasure ship with coins everywhere and a hidden one up. If you have more than one warp whistle in your inventory, you can use one to get to the warp zone, and when you're in the warp zone, you can use the other one, you know, to get to World 8. And. What? You guys want me to go over the changes made from the Japanese version? For the love of Makai, I'm barely keeping up with all the secrets in this game, and you guys want me to do the minor stuff that was changed from the Japanese version. A variation on that one room in the first fortress, and that transition that got removed, are too minor for this video. No dice, I'm drawing the line. <sighs> But as you'd expect, the game got a 16-bit overhaul for All-Stars and Super Mario Advance 4. Yes, not 2, 4. The one that did become 2 will be discussed very soon. But it won't be the next video. Before I go, I'm going to institute a new segment on this show. Mario Facts. Therefore, the little miscellaneous bits of info that couldn't be worked in the main body of the video. They won't be in every vid, however, 
just certain ones. See you later. Enjoy Mario Facts. I need to go to sleep.